Hey everyone, I'm um, just making a video to go over a question that went up on the page today from Grania who asked about basically the, the concept was about eating like bad foods like chocolate or chips or whatever it may be and she was asking like does that turn to fat then or how soon that turns to fat and if like having bad foods is something that then should be like worked off by doing exercise to kind of counteract it and so like it's a big enough topic and um, so I'll try to condense it as best I can. But essentially, the reality of like what happens when we eat food and when we expend energy and all of that is completely different. So uh, to, to just like, I, I ate this and then that, because that's bad, this is like a bad result or a bad um, impact. Um, so like all food you consume is, e is energy. So no matter what food you eat, it's broken down into energy at the most simple form. And that it doesn't matter if that's coming from carbs, proteins, fats, whatever. Now within those, certain ones get broken down into energy and released quicker. So like carbs is our primary, like one for like fast release and energy. Fats are also a long lasting form of energy, but even protein, which is from muscle, will eventually be essentially consumed as energy. And then all activity that we do is energy as well like so energy out so all the mechanisms going on in your body just daily in terms of like keeping your heart ticking keeping your blood flowing everything like that and then you're walking around you're burning a certain amount of energy so when we boil it all down it's always down to like in versus out and your body like doesn't care what goes in essentially at, at the most basic level so you can eat crap and lose weight and at the same token you can eat like really healthy like someone can be eating like i'm eating tons of fruit vegetables and all my meals are organic or whatever but if they eat too much of that they'll gain weight too so there's a really funny example as well a nutrition professor in kansas did like basically a twinkie diet where it wasn't only twinkies but he had like at least one twinkie a day and made his diet like two-thirds junk food um just to prove a point of this kind of calories in versus out. And he lost 27 pounds in 10 weeks just by re really rigidly controlling what goes in. So if you're in a total calorie deficit, that, you know, like there, you can, that's why people get away with having some like scoffer or sweets or chocolate or whatever else. Um, so it's not so much that there's like bad foods. There's obviously foods that are worse than others because they don't provide much nutrient value. And, and But the main thing when it comes to food in and out and the types we choose is mainly down to timing. So like wine gums or sweets or things like that aren't going to be great for someone to have day to day. But like in ha at half time in a soccer match, I'll eat some wine gums, no problem, because it's a quick release of sugar. So it's more about like timing. Same with like a Luc Lucas Sports would be a better example of you know, like at a rest that's a terrible option but when you're exercising and stuff like that people will get away with it but those people are exercising tons and tons and tons as well so um yeah so it's not so much about like one single food or one single meal that will turn into fat the, the whole process of building fat is is way more complicated than that so if if a chocolate bar contributes to you going over your calories then excess energy will eventually be stored as fat so it's not as it's not like any one food turns to fat it's not any one type of food turns to fat it's not any it's not any one type of anything that turns to fat it's, it's essentially a surplus of energy and eventually whether that energy comes from carbs proteins fats whether it comes from chicken veg milk uh cucumbers broccoli whatever if there's an excess of energy that's what will get converted to fat now if you're really active and you're trying to build muscle, that excess of energy is really positive. You want to go into a surplus to build muscle. Um, but when we're primarily focused on fat loss, we're trying to create a deficit. So it's not so much to say that like the snacks of chips and chocolate and that are the main cause of someone gaining weight. But in addition to all of the other food that they're eating, they're sending them over, the, uh, over their threshold, say. Now, the reason why we would target bad foods like that is because generally they're going to be like like empty in terms of nutrients and calories. So things that are highly palatable that contain fats and sugars are on that road towards being somewhat more addictive because they're like satisfying and they're easy and quick to eat. So you can get in a lot of calories really easily. So when we look at the broad scheme of things, like those tend to be the 
bigger offenders because like you're getting like a high amount of calories for a very little amount of return whereas if someone is eating broccoli and eating cauliflower and making that the base of their meals they, they fill up quickly on that and they're not very calorie dense so that's why those snacks are bad for us in in the sense that like they're they're nutrient empty so you don't get a lot of return of the uh you don't get a lot of return on investment for the meal that you're eating compared to like a chicken breast which is going to give you lots of vitamins and minerals but like high protein or compared to berries which are going to be high in antioxidants and stuff like that so um yeah and like in terms of like exercise and off food that I, like i wouldn't want people having that approach or even like thinking that way because it doesn't work like that either and um, you know like it's more obviously you've got an inverse is out so like if you're if you've eaten more like ideally we're burning more and there's a trade-off there too so and if someone is like training less and exercising less we want food to dip down a bit too and that's why we like manipulate carb intake but even if like even when you jump on a treadmill or you jump on a bike or whatever it is it comes up on the screen like 60 calories or sometimes your fitbit will tell you how many calories a workout is and all of that stuff but like i would tell everyone not to take any not place any emphasis on the amount of calories it says that you're burning the, like unless we put you in like a lab setting for 24 hours and measure all of the oxygen you consume and the carbon dioxide you produce and like really like that's the only way we'd ever know how many calories you're burning now there's obviously tons of pretty accurate estimators that we use so like we have the calculator that can kind of estimate how many calories people burn and um, but like to, to exactly know exactly how many you burn is pretty much impossible so we estimate at, like at best but like how many you burn during exercise doesn't really factor in how many you burn for the rest of the day how many you burn just because you have more lean mass like if someone is 70 kilos but really has a lot of muscle mass they burn more key they burn more energy day to day than the 70 kilo person who has less muscle mass so there's there's just tons of contributing factors and um, and we try and make it as simple as possible in terms of like at the very basic level it's always in versus out now that doesn't mean that it doesn't matter what food you eat because the primary first focus point is like that in versus out that's the thing that needs to be addressed first um, and whether you do the calorie challenge or whether you count calories or not like that's what's happening internally whether we realize we're in a surplus or deficit our body tots that up every day anyways so um but it doesn't mean you need to be counting to know what's going on we can manipulate it other ways by controlling our portion sizes reducing carbs different things like that which we already do um so yeah so like at the very basic level we try and make it just like that right primary thing is in versus out but then you also have to realize that there's like quality of food and like all the nutrients and minerals and macros and stuff like that so sure someone can eat a really shitty diet and they can lose weight but it doesn't mean they're doing it in a very healthy way and it doesn't mean that it's really good for their internal health and um, you know like same with that dude who did the twinkie stuff like he lost 27 pounds but it's not to say that he was super healthy doing it or you know probably didn't feel the best doing it but uh, he just did that to prove the point say so yeah hopefully that kind of answers it so no one food you eat is going to turn to fat um, uh, on its own no one type of food is more likely to turn to fat more than another it's just what food puts you into that surplus and if you have a surplus of energy in terms of if you're taking in more than you're burning that's what will turn to fat and we don't know how quickly that takes place like it, it, it will vary person to person and um, but it's not something that it's not something that's instantaneous it's not that you eat a food and then tomorrow it's fat on your belly or anything like that and um, and even the in versus out it's like it's less precise than thinking i've just had a bar that was 200 calories i need to go walk for 40 minutes to burn that, that amount of calories i know they put out that information online sometimes you see it in newspapers like excuse me here's how many minutes you need to walk to burn off a big mac or whatever but it doesn't really work like that in the real world and we've just got an in versus out and we're trying to match that up and you know create a calorie deficit see our weight going down and then we know we're in a deficit pushing our exercise expenditure up doing things like your your resistance form training your hit training your metabolic stuff that's going to burn calories throughout the rest of the day as well and um, 
build lean mass, which is going to help build calories, uh, burn calories, and yeah, so that's about it. So it's a really interesting question, and and I understand that people that that is a way that people may easily think just because it, it might kind of make sense but the reality is it's it's a lot different um, and there's just like thousands of mechanisms going on immediately after you eat and, and throughout that kind of factor in what's going on like what your blood sugar is like how much glycogen you've got in your body how good you are at burning fat compared to burning carbs and all these different things that go on and um, but if we look at it at the most basic level it's going to be in the out and if you're if your in is creeping up because you're eating a lot like high calorie foods, then you're going to be over. But it's not to say that th those were the main cause. They might have contributed, but they might end up being like uh, the full, full cause of it. So, yeah, hopefully that answers that.